Okay, we have here kind of a complicated looking integral from the Berkeley integration should be 2024. We've got the integral from zero to pi over two cosine squared of pi tan x over two plus two tan x dx. Okay, I was browsing around and I saw that black pen, red pen has already done this problem, but I can't tell what method he used because it was a members only video. So I'm not sure if the way I did it is different or what, but let's give it a try. The thing we need to do is the real problem here is just that what's inside the cosine is very complicated looking. But the thing I noticed, just having two plus two, I think we can just factor it. So if I factor a two out here, I can kind of create a pi over two here. And then it's gonna be, we're just gonna have tan x in the numerator. And then this stuff's just gonna be one plus tan x. And then at first it's not really clear what that does for us because we still have a complicated expression. But the thing about it is with pi over two, it's making me think of the complementary angle formula. And I mean, it's not set up for it, but for the complementary angle formula, what we would have is we want something, let's not use X, let's say like cosine of alpha plus pi over two. And actually, no, I want this the other way. We want it as cosine pi over two minus alpha. This is gonna be the same thing as sine of alpha. So in order to do this, I need this form. What I can do here, if I add a plus one, then this whole thing here is just a one. I don't wanna change it so I can subtract one. Then breaking this up, this is all one fraction. So if we split this into two fractions, what's gonna happen is this part becomes one, the rest of it becomes minus one over one plus tan x. I'll bring down this pi over two. And then, well, this thing's in the way, but let me distribute in. If we distribute in the pi over two and come over this way, what's gonna happen? We end up with pi over two minus pi over two, one over one plus tan x. And then getting back to what we're doing, this whole thing is inside a cosine. So I'm not worried about the squared yet. Let's just look at what happens with cosine. The thing is this thing right here, it actually matches this formula right here with a more complicated input. If you think of we're not gonna do a substitution, but you could think of all this as the alpha value in this. So applying the formula, this thing is gonna be just sine pi over two, one over one plus tan x. And so if we just do all this algebra on it and we get this, this thing is all gonna be squared and we're inside the integral. And so we've transformed it into this other thing in terms of sine squared. Okay, so now we've done this whole transformation, but it's not really clear what this does for us. Let me just clean up the board and we'll continue from this point here. Okay, now what we've done here is I put labels on this integral and our original integral. These are both, we're calling these I. Then from here, I wanna go back to our first integral and I just wanna use King's principle on it, where what we're gonna to have to find is our value for f of b plus a minus x in order for this to work. In this case, we're just for the, this is our a, this is our b, so, b plus a is just pi over two, so what we need is f of pi over two minus x. So again, the complicated part is all this stuff that we were messing with before. Applying this, what's gonna happen, we're gonna have, just dealing with the input here, we're gonna have pi. Complementary angle formula and tangent is gonna be just cotangent of x. If you did it out with sines and cosines, the sines turn to cosines, cosines turn to sines, and what you get is cotangent x. Then we already have the two factored out, so let's put it back this way. And then we have one plus, again, the tan x becomes cotangent x. But then before I put this fraction back, I wanna simplify it or rearrange it a little bit. What if I multiply in by one, just multiplying by tan x over tan x? Get rid of this. Well, when you do that, tan x is just the reciprocal of cotangent x, so that's just gonna be a one. And so simplifying this, we get pi over two, tan x times one is gonna be tan x. Again, reciprocals, tan x times cotangent x plus one. So we'll take this and we'll throw it back into our integral. What's gonna happen is we've got another expression for i, same bounds, nothing's changing really. We have cosine squared, but now we're inputting this right here, pi two over tan x plus one. But now what works well off for King's principle is when we add the two integrals together or, or two different versions, I guess we've got three versions. Let's add this one and this one here. 
Doing that, we're gonna get two copies of the integral, or two i. When we add these together, we've got the same bounds and we can kind of just add these two terms and let's see what we have. And now here, all I did was reorder the inputs on these just to make it clear that both these are the same. We've got the same angle, the same input on the sine and cosines. So this is actually just the same thing as like sine squared x plus cosine squared x, and that's just equal to one. So what just happened is this whole thing here, this is just a one. So what we have is the easiest integral in the world. Finish it off, so what we're gonna get is, actually let me divide off the two first, right? Because we wanna isolate our i. So we're gonna have one half, one half in front, integrate this, we get x from zero to pi over two. Plug in, we get just pi over two times a half. For my final solution of this, we just get pi over four. And that's it. Okay, there you go. Fun problem from Berkeley 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.